Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel. My name is Christine and I make complex topics super simple and in today's video we will be conquering azathioprine for doctor life and exams. We're talking actually understanding how this drug works how it's metabolized, and the trouble we can run into when prescribing this medication. Yes, we'll be covering TPMT, allopurinol, the drug interactions, and so much more. So without further ado, let's get to know azathioprine. Azathioprine belongs to a group of drugs known as the thiopurines, which also includes mercaptopurine and thioguanine. All of these drugs are anti-proliferative medications which interfere with the cell cycle. Azathioprine and mercaptopurine are used to treat autoimmune disease and azathioprine is also commonly used in transplant patients to prevent organ rejection. Thioguanine on the other hand tends to be prescribed for hematological malignancies. But how do these drugs actually work. Traditionally, we are taught that these drugs work by forming purine analogues, meaning they form little molecules which look a lot like DNA. And because of this, they become incorporated into the DNA itself. And then when the cell tries to replicate, it realizes its DNA looks a bit funky the cell cycle aborts and the cell undergoes apoptosis. But there's actually more to this story. Azathioprine also reduces the formation of healthy DNA building blocks, making it even harder for the cell to proliferate. But azathioprine doesn't affect all cells equally. Out of all of the cells in our body, lymphocytes are the most susceptible to azathioprine and its little thiopurine buddies. And the reason for this is fascinating. Get this, azathioprine is a prodrug for 6MP. 6MP goes into the cell where it's metabolized into lots of other things, which we will unpack shortly. But one of the metabolites, 6-thio-GTP, sticks to a signaling molecule known as RAC1 and stops it from functioning. Now, you don't need to know a lot about RAC1. All you need to know is that this molecule comes about when T cells are activated. Now, if you have been following along with our immunology series from the beginning, you will be familiar with the concept of T cell co-stimulation. Whenever a T cell is presented with an antigen, one of two things will happen, an immune response or no immune response. If an immune response does happen, it means that there has been successful co-stimulation, where a series of signaling molecules get together and basically cheer on the T cell. And with all of this encouragement, the T cell proliferates to create an army of T cells which go forth in an immune response. But if an immune response does not occur, it means that co-stimulation has been unsuccessful. There's no one cheering on the T cell, and that is very sad. And the T cell undergoes something called analgy and basically fades into the abyss. So coming back to RAC1, this molecule is basically the start of a Mexican wave of signaling molecules cheering on the T cell. When it hears that the T cell has been stimulated by an antigen, it gets rather excited and it stands there waving its little arms and getting all of the other downstream pathways revved up. But if we doctors come along and prescribe azathioprine, this will make 6-thio-GTP, which heads straight to RAC1, stops it from cheering, and ultimately stops all of the other downstream pathways from cheering as well. Now, there's no one cheering on the T cell, and so there's no immune response. And what's interesting is that this effect of azathioprine is not only happening in newly activated naive T cells, it also happens in memory T cells, which probably goes some way to explaining why azathioprine can help autoimmune diseases, where the immune response is already established. But this immunosuppressant effect of azathioprine doesn't happen overnight. And actually, it takes several weeks for azathioprine to have any clinical benefit at all. So when we prescribe azathioprine in inflammatory bowel disease or other autoimmune diseases, we typically give steroids initially alongside azathioprine and then wean the steroids as the azathioprine comes into effect. All of that to say, the immunosuppressant properties of azathioprine come about because of its effect in lymphocytes. But now I want to make an important distinction between the therapeutic effects of azathioprine 
versus the side effects of this medication.